Hey guys, this is Dagon123, and welcome to... TANKCAST! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever episode of TenshiCast. No need for a podcast. Presented by TenshiForum.com. Today with me, I have two great members, Akoa and Devil Becca. No need for the future. A multitude of anime are getting rebooted, getting new story arcs animated, and of course, Say Night's Tale. So, in this episode, we will be talking about the future of Tenshi. We see a lot of anime being brought back from what seems like the dead. Berserk's Golden Arc is being animated. Trigun is getting a new movie called Badlands Rumble after 10 years. What are your thoughts on that? And what do you think the likeliest Tenchi remake possibility would be? That's a really good question. Uh, If they were to go back and remake anything, I think the most likely thing that they might want to go remake and do like uh, would be... Probably the OVA, just because um, I, it, I I don't know. Just it, it's hard for me to say why. I just feel like they might not give the other series as much attention, like Tenchi and Toki or, or Tenchi Universe. I don't know. I I think it could benefit from maybe a reboot. You know, go back and rather than making more and maybe twisting the story up in all these side plots, like it's kind of been doing recently. And uh, just go back and update it and kind of put a new spin on the animation and maybe get younger people into it that missed out on it last generation. Yeah, that's a good question. So we'll probably have like a scenario um, like make, where you have um, the OVA, OVA, sorry, uh, Tension Tokyo or Tension Universe. But uh, I think it would be like, Something like Final Fantasy, basically. You know. I'm glad you brought up that point, Akoa, about bringing Tenchi to a new generation of people. The last time that we saw animation from Tenchi was the OVA. The main cast, anyway. Uh, Even though it hadn't really been all that long since Tenchi Forever, I'm going to exclude GXP for now, but even taking that one into account, the style in three or four years was radically different, and with the way Moe as a design choice has taken over the market, Will that affect Tenchi's design? Even though Tenchi's designs are by Masaki Kajushima, looking at Tenchi in Tokyo, AIC had a very distinct style around that time, which reflected all of their series for a while, from Tenchi to Elizard to a little bit of Duel. If Tenchi was made today by AIC, would the designs for Tenchi be different? They very well could be different, just because um, the old character designs were made back in the 90s and back then it was a little bit different with how they did character designs as far as i i know i've I've kind of looked into it a little bit and um they aim for a different look now than they used to and they might want to i'm almost afraid to say that they might if they did do something they might want to update everyone like might make them look less crazy less uh out there like with their hair and stuff and I can't really say that I'm all for that, because I do like the original character designs a lot. I I just don't know how well, how much respect they might give to it or not, or if they might just try to do, like, what Devil May Cry, the new Devil May Cry is doing, and just kind of, like, revamp the character look and keep, like, the story or something. That's a good point. And as we've seen from the Tenchi fan base, they're very fierce when it comes to even the simplest of changes. For instance, let's look at pronunciation. When Funimation decided to go with Sasami instead of Sasami, yes, it's phonetically correct, but people didn't like it. They very much did not like it, because that's how they had always heard it. And if we look at OV83, well, that pretty much speaks for itself there. You have to be mindful of the changes you make. Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Well, as for me, I think if it was made by AIC, it would be hard to tell whether or not we would get a design change. Looking at St. Knight's Tale, the designs resemble OVA 3 a bit, but of course it's not the same as it was years before. But you have to keep things comfortable for the fans, as we all know even the smallest changes, like Sasami's name change, Sasami, (laughs) like Sasami's name change in Magical Girls Club was hugely negative. 
looking forward at what we should see from Tenchi, it's not so much what, but who. The biggest reason people are negative at the OVA line now, besides the ham-fisted convoluted story, is the characters. Ryoko laying down for Airi for Noike? Pfft. I'm not watching Tenshi, you know, I'm not really watching Tenshi anymore at this point. It's become way too cluttered with new characters, and we need to focus on what's already there in the OVA, and what plots and subplots we need to wrap up, and I've always been a fan, and I've always pushed for the Throne of Jirai plot that arises at the end of OVA 2. Certainly, I think that's a good way to put it. I think really the only way that they could even go back and efficiently do something without going forward would be as if they animated the true Tenchi novels. That's the only thing that really comes to mind that they could do and try to fill in the backstory. But I'm almost afraid that if they did that, then the the canon might get really cluttered up and then we'll get a bunch of people coming out complaining about it. Yeah. It would be a great way to introduce uh, Azusa as an, as an antagonist. He fits the bill after the end of OVA 2. You know, do the whole Fanaho Masaki visiting, then do a plot kind of like the end of universe. Somehow throw the somehow the throne comes back into everyone's mind, probably through Fanaho and her sister's visit. Turmoil on the way, tumultuous battle ensues, people love it. Tenchi gets nerfed to give him the underdog appeal, which gives us a great avenue to introduce the OVA's narrow everybody wins scenario in a way people can stomach. It's certainly better than two episodes of soulless recap, three episodes of characters no one cares about, and one episode of, oh shit, we forgot the plot. Tenchi's been shoehorned into this corner where it can't be itself in the name of posterity, and it sucks. Absolutely. I, I kind of feel like, the, like you said, it was shoehorned in and kind of half-arsed because it seemed like at the time he was fixated with uh, doing GXP, and he really just used it as kind of like a filler to bring in some GXP cameo the whole time. Like, uh, he put an awful lot of emphasis on Misao. He even had some references to GXP characters that were just random, didn't need to be there. And, uh, I mean, I can understand if he wants to do that GXP, but then don't give us Tenchi and, and like, half-ass it and ruin the series for us. But um, I think that was an excellent point that you made. I think they ruined it when... And they, um, they introduced um, Irie. Our next point. St. Knight's Tale, Isekai no Seiki Shimonogatari, is the latest installment in the Tenchi universe. Follows the accolades of Tenchi's half-brother, Kenshi Masaki, son of Rea and Nobuyuki Masaki, as he is transported to the world of Geminar, where we follow his adventures. What are your thoughts on it? Um, it was pretty good, really. I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean... I thought, in a lot of ways, it felt like old Kajishima style. Like, he was really trying to channel that old Tenchi feeling. He put in a little bit more, like, etchy and fan service than he normally would. But, I mean, I think that's just kind of the direction he's gone. Pre- matured and gotten a little older, he's gotten a little bit more into including that. And maybe it's better for the market if it's in there. But I, I thought it was really good, and it was a lot of fun. And it was... An OVA, so it was a little bit shorter, but you had the longer episodes at 45 minutes per episode to kind of, uh, it felt more like you're watching a big TV special. So it was kind of, uh, every time you get that new episode come out, it, it was really exciting to just kind of see like how much they could do with that time slot. I like that you brought up that it feels like Tenchi, or like how Tenchi used to, because it does feel very much like Tenchi used to. It feels like Kajishima really put a lot of effort into it. The show itself is great. I love the mechs, our main white mech, of course, being a reference to Duel's Hartzina, and Kenshi himself. You know, it's funny, we look at Kenshi, and I don't want to use the word god, but I think it's in episode 7 or 8, he walks on the ceiling and kicks that guy in the face, and that's, you know, that's normal for him, like, oh, you know, meh, defying gravity, all in a day's work. Yeah, he's just kind of a... It's almost like he's an amalgam of the entire Tenchi household. I mean, I've seen some people kind of mention it before. They say, like, he's got traits of all the other characters, almost. Like, he, like almost like he's learned the skills from them. Like, uh, like he maybe they've taught him. And he brings them up an awful lot, too. Oh, definitely. In the first couple episodes, we see cameos of Washu and Ryoki, as well as constant references to... Oh yeah, that reminds me of my sister who's lazy all the time, or, oh yeah, just like my sister who loves to cook, and that's a grab at the Tenchi fans, he knows who are watching, because I mean, you know, duh, 
Kenshi's related to Tenchi. One interesting point on that is that he references the girls as his sisters. And we know in Japanese that younger boys will refer to older girls as their onechan or older sisters. But this also has relevance because of Tenchi's foreshadowing wedding to everybody. So this begs the question, has it already happened at this point? Did he already go to Jirai? Are they all you know, are they all doing with him what we see in that Omaki nobody wants to remember? <laughs> You know, it's a great rib on Kajishima's part because it does drive us fans nuts because we, you know, we're going back and forth and discussing it. And he, you know, of course, you know, of course he knows we're going to do that. Yeah, I noticed that as well. That was, uh, it was really interesting how they did that. And it, he, he, he described them so that you could generally tell who he was talking about, but he never referred to them by name. Hopefully we'll see maybe a license or something in the future and then, uh, a little bit more information about it. I'd love to see a license. SKT also had a very great cast of characters. I loved everybody, you know, and that's kind of surprising from a show that's related to Tenchi. Even Maria, who I thought was going to be the archetypal Aika character, but ended up being really cool. Of course, you know, every character with the exception of Dagmire. Yeah, I mean, there were... I can't think of anybody, like, that I I hated except maybe for Dagmire, or I call him Douchemire. They, everybody else was pretty much spot on and cool and... I like some more than others. It's no secret that I'm a big Kyaya fan, but uh, Lashara is really cool and Aura. I noticed a lot of people gravitated toward Yukine, other characters as well. My favorite was Kaya and Kenji. The way Kyaya was set up, she felt like she was going to have that Ryoko attitude, very strong and true to her values. Yeah, I just kind of felt like she was one of the more active roles in the story than. I, I thought that towards the end, it seemed like we saw a little bit less of some of the characters that maybe Yukine, I felt like we saw a little bit less of her as it went on. There were a few episodes where it was like she really didn't make too many appearances, it seemed like, and it seemed like they, did, they just kind of took the spotlight from her, and I can't really think of too many moments where she or other characters had, it seemed like they kind of went through this story. Each of the girls had a, at least one moment in the story where they had a, a deep emotional moment with Kenshi. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if you guys caught that, but uh, Lashara had one. Uh, Aura had the kiss with Kenshi at that one, the running episode. Um, I can't think of the others because it's been like three or four months since I saw it. And it was on Chinese fan subs on like the last couple episodes. So I'm not even like a hundred percent, but uh, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think Kiyo's was when she decided not to kill him. You know, I, I don't remember if he was awake or not, but, I mean, he's he's Kenshi. He knew what was going on. He has eyes in the back of his head. And that was a very strong emotional moment for her. I think, overall, St. Knight's Tale, Sekishi Monogatari, was a great inclusion into the OVA line. I think it was a step in the right direction. Yeah, I, I kind of think of it as if he were, if Kajishima were to make an ex- another OVA, and kind of rejuvenate the Tenchi franchise's roots, I would like to see something of this a similar vein uh, and style. You know, the way he handled kind of the harem setting was a little bit better uh, for the most part, and it was it had some good humor in it. And I think if he kind of brings it back, it felt more like Tenchi's original OVAs, where it was like, what's going to happen today? And their slice of life world, you know, it wasn't quite, and occasionally they toss in a baddie, you know, it wasn't always just like, oh, dry politics, uh, political intrigue, Gundam wing. They also did a very good job with all the action. The mech action was extremely well done. It was balanced very well. Absolutely. I loved, uh, I loved seeing some of the scenes in particular where Kenshi would be fighting somebody and he'd just kick the crap out of them. And then they'd, they'd get so scared. They'd like have snot running down their face or they'd be crying like on a couple of the earlier episodes. Well, I know I look forward to seeing more great things from Tenchi in the future. You know, people have always said after OVA3, well, there's nowhere else for Tenchi to go. You're beating a dead horse. You're beating a dead horse. But I don't believe that at all. I think there are many, many doors and many directions Tenchi can go in. Yeah, because remember, um, the, the guy is about 52. So I think he's got a kind of long way to go. It's not over yet. Yeah, I think there's a lot that they can explore still, and um, I, I can't help but mention how many people, like, when St. Night's Tale was coming out, um, every episode people were saying, when's the Tenchi cameo? When is the Tenchi main cast going to come in there and make their cameo? And 
it never happened. And we saw Washu and Ryooki in the one episode, and everybody got really excited. But it was, it ended up being a tease. So I'm hoping that that means he's not giving them the cameo because he's going to put them in something soon. Because I would love to see more. In fact, I'd love to see more of alternate universes too, not just even canon. Like uh, something in the same vein as like universe. Like we were talking about a, long, a little while ago with like Kione and it, or some of the, like Nagi or Kanoki. Thank you guys very much for coming in and doing TenchiCast today, guys. Becca or Devil Becca? No problem. Anytime. It was a lot of fun. I had I really enjoyed it. Until next time, stay gold. 